Lunar Surface Science ALSEP The Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package was a suite of nuclear-powered experiments flown on each landing mission after Apollo 11. This equipment was to be emplaced by the astronauts to continue functioning after the astronauts returned to Earth. For Apollo 17, the ALSEP experiments were a heat flow experiment to measure the rate of heat flow from the interior of the Moon, a lunar surface gravimeter, to measure alterations in the lunar gravity field at the site, a lunar atmospheric composition experiment, to investigate what the lunar atmosphere is made up of, a lunar seismic profiling experiment, to detect nearby seismic activity, and a lunar ejecta and meteorites experiment, to measure the velocity and energy of dust particles. Of these, only the HFE had been flown before, the others were new. The HFE had been flown on the aborted Apollo 13 mission, as well as on Apollo 15 and 16, but placed successfully only on Apollo 15, and unexpected results from that device made scientists anxious for a second successful emplacement. The lunar gravimeter was intended to detect waivers in gravity, which would provide support for Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, it ultimately failed to function as intended. The LACE was a surface-deployed module that used a mass spectrometer to analyze the Moon's atmosphere. On previous missions, the code cathode gauge experiment had measured the quantity of atmospheric particles, but the LACE determined which gases were present, principally neon, helium and hydrogen. The LSPE was a seismic detecting device that used geophones, which would detect explosives to be set off by ground command once the astronauts left the moon. When operating, it could only send useful data to Earth in high bit rate, meaning that no other ALSEP experiment could send data then, and limiting its operating time. It was turned on to detect the liftoff of the ascent stage, as well as use of the explosives packages, and the ascent stage's impact, and thereafter about once a week, as well as for some 100-hour periods. The LEAM had a set of detectors to measure the characteristics of the dust particles it sought. It was hoped that the LEAM would detect dust impacting the Moon from elsewhere, such as from comets or interstellar space, but analysis showed that it primarily detected dust moving at slow speeds across the lunar surface. All powered ALSEP experiments that remained active were deactivated on September 30, 1977, principally because of budgetary constraints. In addition to being used by the astronauts for transport from station to station on the mission's three moonwalks, the LRV was used to transport the astronauts' tools, communications equipment, and the lunar samples they gathered. The Apollo 17 LRV was also used to carry some of the scientific instruments, such as the Traverse Gravimeter Experiment and Surface Electrical Properties Experiment. The Apollo 17 LRV traveled a cumulative distance of approximately 35.7 kilometers in a total drive time of about 4 hours and 26 minutes. The greatest distance Cernan and Schmidt traveled from the lunar module was about 7.6 kilometers. This was the only mission to carry the TGE, which was built by Draper Laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. As gravimeters had been useful in studying the Earth's internal structure, the objective of this experiment was to do the same on the Moon. The gravimeter was used to obtain relative gravity measurements at the landing site in the immediate vicinity of the lunar module, as well as various locations on the mission's traverse routes. Scientists would then use this data to help determine the geological substructure of the landing site and the surrounding vicinity. Measurements were taken while the TGE was mounted on the LRV, and also while the device was placed on the lunar surface. A total of 26 measurements were taken with the TGE during the mission's three moonwalks, with productive results. The SEP was also unique to Apollo 17, and included two major components, a transmitting antenna deployed near the lunar module and a receiver mounted on the LRV. At different stops during the mission's traverses, electrical signals traveled from the transmitting device, through the ground, and were received at the LRV. The electrical properties of the lunar regolith could be determined by comparison of the transmitted and received electrical signals. The results of this experiment, which are consistent with lunar rock composition, show that there is almost no water in the area of the Moon in which Apollo 17 landed, to a depth of 2 kilometers. A 2.4 meters long, 2 centimeters diameter device, the lunar neutron probe was inserted into one of the holes drilled into the surface to collect core samples. It was designed to measure the quantity of neutrons which penetrated to the detectors it bore along its length. This was intended to measure the rate of the gardening process on the lunar surface, whereby the regolith on the surface is slowly mixed or buried due to micrometeorites and other events. Placed during the first EVA, it was retrieved during the third and final EVA. The astronauts brought it with them back to Earth, and the measurements from it were compared with the evidence of neutron flux in the core that had been removed from the hole it had been placed in. 
Results from the probe and from the cores were instrumental in current theories that the top centimeter of lunar regolith turns over every million years, whereas gardening, to a depth of one meter takes about a billion years. Apollo 17 CM carried a biological cosmic ray experiment, containing five mice that had been implanted with radiation monitors under their scalps to see whether they suffered damage from cosmic rays. These animals were placed in individual metal tubes inside a sealed container that had its own oxygen supply, and flown on the mission. Inofficially, according to Cernan, the Apollo 17 crew dubbed them Fei, Fi, Fo, Fum, and Fui. Four of the five mice survived the flight, though only two of them appeared healthy and active. The cause of death of the fifth mouse was not determined. The scalp lesions and liver lesions appeared to be unrelated to one another. Nothing was found that could be attributed to cosmic rays. The biostack experiment was similar to one carried on Apollo 16, and was designed to test the effects of the cosmic rays encountered in space travel on microorganisms that were included, on seeds, and on the eggs of simple animals, which were carried in a sealed container. The Apollo 17 SM contained the scientific instrument module bay. The SIM bay housed three new experiments for use in lunar orbit, a lunar sounder, an infrared scanning radiometer, and a far ultraviolet spectrometer. A mapping camera, panoramic camera, and a laser altimeter, which had been carried previously, were also included in the SIM bay. The lunar sounder was to beam electromagnetic impulses toward the lunar surface, which were designed with the objective of obtaining data to assist in developing a geological model of the interior of the moon to an approximate depth of 1.3 kilometers. The infrared scanning radiometer was designed with the objective of generating a temperature map of the lunar surface to aid in locating surface features such as rock fields, structural differences in the lunar crust, and volcanic activity. The far ultraviolet spectrometer was to be used to obtain information on the composition, density, and constituency of the lunar atmosphere. The spectrometer was also designed to detect far UV radiation emitted by the sun that had been reflected off the lunar surface. The laser altimeter was designed to measure the altitude of the spacecraft above the lunar surface within approximately 2 meters, providing altitude information to the panoramic and mapping cameras, which were also in the SIM bay. Light flash phenomenon and other experiments main article, cosmic ray visual phenomena beginning with Apollo 11, crew members observed light flashes that penetrated their closed eyelids. These flashes, described by the astronauts as streaks or specks of light, were usually observed while the spacecraft was darkened during a sleep period. These flashes, while not observed on the lunar surface, would average about two per minute and were observed by the crew members during the trip out to the moon, back to Earth, and in lunar orbit. The Apollo 17 crew repeated an experiment, also conducted on Apollo 16, with the objective of linking these light flashes with cosmic rays. Evans wore a device over his eyes that recorded the time, strength, and path of high-energy atomic particles that penetrated the device, while the other two wore blindfolds to keep out light. Apollo 17 carried a sodium iodide crystal identical to the ones in the gamma-ray spectrometer flown on Apollo 15 and 16. Data from this, once it was examined on Earth, was to be used to help form a baseline, allowing for subtraction of rays from the CM or from cosmic radiation to gain better data from the earlier results. The S-band transponders in the CSM and LM were pointed at the Moon to gain data on its gravitational field. 